Hello everyone and welcome to Guild Wars 2 Daily. The footage in the background for today comes from A Dragon 202 who I've done so many episodes lately where I've been trying to use their footage for stuff and finally I'm just going to start doing it. They've got absolutely loads so we might be sticking with it for a few days. A uh, bit of a mix today, I've got a bit of newsy type stuff about the channel, Guild Wars 2 newsy type stuff and also we're going to be doing a spotlight on something a lot of people have been asking about for a while that I've kind of put off because I don't have that much to say about the race, they're not that amazing to me but uh, there is plenty to say so we will uh, we'll go for that but anyway first of all um, I wanted to let everyone know about the countdown thing. I kind of made a, a decision today. As you know, the plan was to do one video a day, but I realized as I was writing out earlier, I spent like an hour and a half writing out like the next seven things. I was just going to like write scripts for them and then read them. And it took me about an hour and a half to write all the stuff and make sure everything was accurate and fine. And then once I actually got around to recording, all of them were under five minutes. They were all like two, three minute videos. And I actually, I don't want to be just spamming crappy tiny little videos out like that. So what I'm going to do instead is it's the exact exact same thing is going to happen, we'll still do it, but it's going to be one video a week that recaps like the previous seven days or something like that, so we'll still be doing the countdown, it just won't be daily, we're already doing Guild Wars 2 daily that we can kind of remind ourselves through that, so we'll do the same, exact same concept, but it'll just be like at the end of every week we'll be counting down kind of thing, and we'll do like some more special episodes there, instead of spamming you guys with tiny, really shallow information about all the features we already know, there's only a couple of minutes long, I hope you can understand that, I thought it was a really cool idea at first, but when I I actually got to figuring it out it just it wasn't taking my fancy it really wasn't so anyway there's that moving on I wanted to talk about before the spotlight as well somebody told me something really cool about the trailer I mentioned before that I hadn't actually gone through and analyzed it frame by frame or anything like I might have done before uh, but there is something pretty incredible that I'd missed I didn't know about and somebody kindly came and told me there's been a lot of discussion it seems on the forums about whether that thing actually is Zaitan I didn't believe it was Zaitan from the off and this person left quite a few interesting points that kind of backs that up. For example, we have heard from the developers that Zaitan's body is just like this ridiculously big, complicated thing that was horrible and really difficult to design just because it's so big and it's got so many moving parts and that. And you can compare the size of the thing we saw flying by the airship to other things we know about in the game and it certainly doesn't seem to be that big. So I don't, I still don't think that that's Zaitan. Whatever it is, it is a new dragon, which is very cool. It, I think something a lot of people forget and I know I forgot about for a while is in this trailer we've actually seen a few big monsters and stuff that we haven't actually seen in the betas or anything so far. And I think about one of the trailers ended with a Savari underwater and this giant thing swam past the camera. We've not seen that thing either. But there certainly are all these really big, cool, amazing things in the game and this is one of them. Most interesting thing though about this trailer that I do regret now not having flicked through it myself and checked every little frame is people have seen that one of the shots of the trailer where you see some of the cannons firing off of the edge of the airship, you can actually see in the background there's a couple more drones dragons it looks like there might be two or three more dragons out in the distance flying around at the same time at that same point in the game which is crazy to me whether that means that's just going to be there in the trailer or whether that means it's actually going to be something in game where we'll have multiple dragons flying around above us and we might be out in the sky fighting them is really really exciting so I wanted to point that out to everyone and hopefully I can get this gif working or something so that I can show you these frames where you can see these things out in the distance. Really, really cool. There seems to have been a lot of good discussion about Zaitan. He, that thing we saw on the trailer doesn't match up to the concept art that we've seen at all and we do know that they've used the concept art to create Zaitan. So yeah, I stand by it. I don't think we've seen Zaitan. I think it would be a bad move for Arena to show us Zaitan this early anyway. That's why on that other video I was talking to Magical Mike and we both agree as well that we're probably not going to see the Silvari or the Asura until the actual launch of the game. I think it's a good thing that they've held a lot of this stuff off because it keeps the excitement of the game up. Some MMOs have been really open about their betas and they just let you play it permanently but you know ArenaNet have been quite sealed off with it. They've just given us a few weekends and comparatively not that much about the game. At this point it's like we've played it so much and seen so many videos. For me at least it feels like we've seen a lot of the game but the truth is we really haven't and there is quite a lot out there and I like that they've still got that hidden and out there. This thing they showed us in the trailer was obviously very cool but it's not it's still not the big main thing at the end of the game so I don't feel spoiled by that which is uh, awesome and I like to keep it that way so that's just my reason why I don't think it's Zaitan and want to point out the little dragons anyway moving on to the spotlight 
Uh, as much of a spotlight as it's going to be, I feel like already I'm not going to be able to go into as much detail on this one. We're going to be talking about the Hylek. So the Hylek are one of the minor races in Guild Wars 2. They are a minor race that has got their own blog post. Many of the minor races have at this point. I think I mentioned one of the only ones that don't have their own blog posts at this point seem to be the Tengu. And I agree with everyone that's saying the reason why the Tengu don't have it is because they're not really a minor race. They're going to become a major race. They're going to become a playable race sometime in the future. So Arena now haven't given them a minor race blog post yet, which is why I'd agree with. But the Hylek are a minor race, and they do have a blog post. Does that mean that they're not a candidate at some point for becoming playable? No, not at all. I actually think that these guys we should sit up and pay attention to, because not only are they just quite cool, but also they, as I will explain in a minute, kind of, in a weird way, have a presence in Alona, which, if that becomes an expansion at some point could mean that they will eventually become playable. A lot of people say for a loner it should be centaurs that become the playable race. I, I still disagree with that. Not just because of swimming, but just because I don't think they fit that well as a playable race. I just don't think it fits in very well with Guild Wars 2. But in any case, the Hylek definitely do seem to fit there. Why do I say for Nightfall? Well, this is what we knew about them in Guild Wars 1. They weren't a race that had a particularly large amount of lore written for them. They were one of these races, much like the Grawl and various others and the Naga from Guild Wars 1, that were kind of there, had some interesting facts about them, but mostly were just hostile things that you never really got to interact with. In fact, I'm struggling to think, and I'm pretty sure there was never a scenario in Guild Wars 1 where we actually got to speak to these guys. In Guild Wars 1, though, when Nightfall came out and we got to go to Alona, there weren't any Hylek. There were frog people, or toad people, should I say, called Hecate. And then when Eye of the North came out, we then had a new group of people called the Hylek. So in Guild Wars 1, we had two different types of frog or toad people, right? We had the Hecate in Nightfall and the Hylek in Eye of the North. And I'm going to have to put a, a message on the screen there so you guys can see the difference between the names of these guys. The Hecate and the Hylek. So the Hecate are toad people that lived in Alona and the Hylek were in Eye of the North. Lore goes that even though these two things exist at the same time in Guild Wars 1, the Hylek are the descendants of the Hecate, as if they're a more evolved version, if you will, of the Hecate. So it's very similar to how on Earth at the moment people say, oh, humanity evolved from apes and there are still apes out on the planet. So it's the same kind of thing there. However, in Guild Wars 2, as far as Tyria or where the playable rate places at the launch of the game are going to be, there aren't any Hecate around, it's only Hylek. Does that mean that the Hecate are now extinct come 250 years? Not necessarily, maybe when we get to Alona the Hecate will be back. But as far as we should be concerned there are only Hylek in Guild Wars 2, but we should be aware that they are descendants of Hecate which might still be about. So the Hylek were introduced in Eye of the North, but we didn't really get any lore past that. We just knew that they were these tribe-like people, and that structure still exists in Guild Wars 2. For Guild Wars 2, you see them mostly around water areas. In fact, I, I believe some of the original interviews where we were hearing about them being in there, they talked a lot about how they lived on the Steam Sperm Mountains, which was a term that was thrown around a lot during the earlier days of Guild Wars 2's development, but has kind of fallen out of use a little bit now, I feel like. I don't really hear anyone mentioning that. Maybe it's just kind of been phased away. But the Steam Spur Mountains was the name that was basically given to the southern areas of the Shiver Peaks that supposedly the climate's changed a lot now. And that was where primarily we were led to believe the Hylek would be. Seems like mostly though they're around the Sea of Sorrows, which is still kind of Steam Spur Mountains, and also the Tarnished Coast. We'll probably see the race around there mostly. They're not all allied to us. A lot of them are still hostile to us. And that's because in the lore, these guys, as I say, function in little tribes. And it depends if the tribe wants to associate with us, the greater race, if we if we'll go that far of Tyria, whether they want to associate with us or not. Typically, they've always been hostile. A lot of them have been hostile, but over 250 years, a fair few now tribes have kind of turned, and they've decided that by being at peace with some of these other races, enables them to trade and to flourish as a race. So you've got these different tribes. The tribes are really split apart. The way you would tell different tribes from one another, aside from name, would be their colour. So I think the idea is that the darker the colour, the more aggressive and dangerous the Hylek possibly are, and the lighter, the less they are. That's kind of how it works as far as I'm aware. But there are a fair few of them that are just quite xenophobic, like, just like in Guild Wars 1, and they don't like you and they will just fight against you. They have recently turned, I suppose, to some of them becoming allied with us because they have it quite hard. They're amphibians, right? And the way that they reproduce, we've got all this lore that when they reproduce, they might lay thousands of eggs, I believe it is. 
it's either hundreds or thousands of eggs, but only a very few of like the tadpoles or whatever actually survive, like barely any of them. So there's this kind of theme of how the older the Hylek get in Guild Wars 2, the more revered they are by other Hylek and like the really old ones are treated as very wise, very, very decent members of society and everyone kind of looks up to them. So they're kind of on the edge. Then they're, they're a threatened species, especially now that the Elder Dragons have started to be moving around and there's been lots of activity on that front. Now this has kind of encouraged some of them to become allied and begin trading with us. You might be wondering, well, trade for what? Well, these guys are potion makers and they, they create toxins and, antid and, and antidotes and they're kind of like alchemists. In fact, I believe when the, the blog post came out the engineer hadn't been revealed yet and I think the word alchemist was used there or in one of the interviews the word alchemist was used and or alchemy was used and I remember when this first came out we were all very excited because we're like oh look they're hinting at potions and stuff like this because of course no one knew what the next two professions were going to be at that point and the engineer it turns out did have alchemy kind of rolled into it partly but we didn't know whether that was literally the last profession the alchemist and that was like profession 8 or profession 7 which was uh, really cool so I always think of that when I think of these guys but that's a big part of their culture they make these potions and these toxins and that's what they trade to the other races that's what we want that's what we buy from them and give them other things which is kind of cool they function in their little tribes I mentioned earlier that the older ones are kind of more wise they don't really have religion but they worship like the sun they're kind of like those old I want to say Aztec or something you know like South American societies and cultures where they, they just kind of worship the sun and not necessarily as this god or this thing that can think for itself I don't think it's just kind of this d divine entity that they worship and the idea is you, that each tribe has got like a priest or each group or within a tribe has got like a priest that see looks over everyone in the village and this priest or priestess is particularly well versed in looking at the sun and the sky as well and interpreting how the weather's going to be. A big part of where they live, I guess, is the idea that there are dry seasons and they look at the sun as this thing that brings lots of life because they kind of attribute it with the sky and like bringing rains and they need the sun and the warmth to grow things. And they so they see it as this thing that brings lots of life, but at the same time, they see it as this kind of bringer of destruction and famine and stuff because if there's no rain for a very long time, it dries everything up and kills everything. So there's this kind of duality and they worship the sun for that. And the priest or priests are supposed to be able to interpret what the Tyrian sun kind of means and it, I guess that the main function of that is so that they actually predict the weather it's the idea if you're a really good priest or priestess you would be predicting the weather quite well and you'd be helping the tribe suffer through long famines or take good advantage of when it's raining a lot and stuff like that so that's how they're structured that's most of what's going on with them. They do fight amongst themselves. Some of the tribes don't agree with what the other tribes have to say, and they fight one another. But in general, I think we'll be seeing more allied ones than enemy ones. There have been a few notable Hylic characters in the in the books. I remember, I believe one was in the Vigil, like the Charter House at the Vigil, which is just absolutely really cool. Or I might even be remembering that from in-game at Lion's Arch. But uh, it's really, really cool to see these little races in interesting places like that. I've always been fascinated by the idea of a book or a story or something about how you'd have Tengu and Hylek and maybe a centaur or something. The, the, the minor races all together and interacting with one another. And these guys, they're, they're really, really cool to me. And I can't wait to get in there and talk to them and see how they are. They do this kind of like crazy tongue lash thing. And even in Guild Wars 1, even though they were only fighting us, I always thought they were kind of one of the more interesting things in the game. They had all these pets, like they'd have pet alligators and stuff which was really cool and I'm just curious how they'll function like in Guild Wars 2 are we going to have a really important char high lick character that helps us fight Zaitan in the end or something I guess we'll have to wait and find out but that's the race very cool as I say they might be a playable race in Guild Wars 2 I'd certainly put them higher than the centaurs myself but then again would it be the high lick or would it be the Hecate and would it be with an expansion when we go to Alona or what I'm not sure but there you go guys that's uh, I've, a few people have been asking about that maybe some other people quite like the race as I say, I don't, I don't feel like there's as much there to them as there are to the Grawl and stuff. But I suppose there's not much to any of the lesser races, really, at this point. But we'll see what more comes out of it. I'll keep you guys up to date with any interesting updates on the Hylek as a race. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed Guild Wars 2 Daily for today. Thanks very much for watching. And again, sorry about the countdown thing. I hope you kind of understand where I'm coming from. I just didn't want to be putting out loads of tiny little videos. I kind of got everyone's hopes up and maybe I should have thought a little bit more about it before I put up those first two. But yeah, you know, you live, you learn, and we'll be seeing it weekly anyway. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.